In today's video, we're going to take a close look at a mechanical set of construction drawings. I'm going to be talking about how I would approach reading and digesting these from start to finish. By the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of what's included in the mechanical drawings, how to read the mechanical drawings, and how the mechanical drawings tie into the rest of the building and the overall project. So let's go. All right, if you're new to this video series or new to my channel, I would highly suggest starting at the beginning of my drawing review video playlist as I include some good tips throughout each of the previous videos to help build on the skill set of reading and digesting construction drawings. The mechanical drawing set typically covers everything HVAC related, standing for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So the mechanical contractor installs the equipment related to heating, cooling, refrigeration, and all the associated ductwork, piping, and control wiring for that equipment. Sometimes, depending on the design engineer, any gas piping, if applicable to the project, may be included in the mechanical drawings as well, but the gas piping could also be found within the plumbing drawing set. So mechanical systems come in a variety of forms, which requires an entire video of its own to discuss all of these. But essentially, different buildings are heated and cooled using different types of heating and cooling systems. So some older buildings could still use steam to heat their buildings, while newer buildings might use hot water piping to heat their buildings. Both heating systems could originate from some sort of a boiler. On the cooling side, buildings could use cooling equipment such as chillers, heat pumps, which use a combination of water and glycol to cool these buildings. These systems all depend on when the building was built, the intended use of the building, and sometimes budget. So I'm going to pause for a quick moment because I started talking about chillers, heat pumps, and glycol, which create these complex systems. I've got to give a shout out to my favorite channel on YouTube when it comes to learning mechanical and electrical systems, which is the engineering mindset. This channel is a wealth of knowledge on how systems such as chillers or heat pumps actually work, which is a great supplemental education if you don't have a formal engineering background, which I don't either. Understanding how to read drawings along with understanding how these systems work is going to paint the full picture and connect all these different aspects of the building process. All right, so moving forward, there are a few individuals that complete scope under the mechanical division that I want to cover. And in no particular order, we have tinners, which are the men and women who install mechanical ductwork, which moves air and distributes air throughout the building, as well as all the related air moving equipment. Then we have fitters, who are the men and women who install the mechanical piping. And what runs in the piping is dependent on the type of mechanical system the building uses. Remember, this could be steam, water, glycol, which is all dependent on the equipment needs and uses for the space. We also have the mechanical controls contractor, who are the men and women who install the low voltage wiring, which interconnects our thermostats and our mechanical equipment all back to a BAS system, otherwise known as a building automation system, which I'll explain later in this video. These controls contractors are also responsible for programming the software that will run this equipment known as the controls sequence. And finally, each mechanical drawing set should come with a set of specifications that we need to read further to understand the requirements of the mechanical scope for this overall project. The specifications could include key information such as equipment information, building control sequencing, installation requirements, testing of systems, and much more. Okay, before we jump into the specific details within the drawing set, which are those zoomed in drawings within each plan or sheet, we're going to get a general understanding of the plans at a high level. I always suggest doing this for all drawing sets, starting with the zoomed out overview and then working ourselves further and further into those smaller details. So we'll take a brief look at all the pages by skipping through the drawing set and reading the sheet names. Then we'll refocus on each page individually and finally we'll start to look at those smaller details within each page. So let's get going through these plan sheets and see what's in this mechanical drawing set. All right, here we're starting off with sheet MD 2.1, first floor HVAC demolition plan. This demolition plan is not going to show us other demolitions such as plumbing or architectural. Then we have M2.1, first floor HVAC. This is showing the mechanical ducting and equipment throughout the space, primarily specific to the distribution of airflow throughout the system, but will include larger equipment such as chillers and air handlers. We also have M2.2, first floor HVAC, piping. 
And looking at this particular section, I see pipes entering this air-cooled chiller, as well as exiting this air-cooled chiller, based on the associated arrows. So I just wanted to note this because these lines labeled CHS and CHR are specific to something we'll talk about shortly. Next, we have M3.1, mechanical room and penthouse floor part plans. So mechanical equipment takes up a lot of space and there is usually a central room or rooms designated to house this major mechanical equipment and associated electrical equipment that serves that mechanical equipment. Yes, the mechanical equipment sometimes gets its own penthouse. All right, M5.1, mechanical sections, which are just more detailed views of these rooms if we were to be standing in the space looking at a certain direction. Remember from some of my previous videos, the section cut or view we're looking at originates from a floor plan view, and I've got it here side by side telling us which direction we're looking. M7.1, heating and cooling plant piping details. We've got a lot of symbols on this page that we'll make sense of in just a minute. Now we're getting into the detail pages with M7.2, heating and cooling coil piping details showing more clarity for certain aspects of the project, how things are specifically piped at pieces of equipment, what the mechanical contractor needs to do when penetrating through walls, and much more. Then we have M7.3, air distribution details. After that is M7.4, mechanical details. Then we move into M8.1, the chilled water system control diagram. And remember, these building systems are complex, so these systems need programmed automation to ensure we're comfortable with temperature and humidity in these spaces, which is all accomplished through building controls by the building control contractor who typically works under the mechanical contractor. So controls really just means a bunch of low voltage wiring and relays hooked up to motors, valves, dampers, and essentially anything that needs to fluctuate or be monitored on the overall system. The low voltage wiring hooked up to these motors, valves, etc., all go back to the BAS, which was that building automation system. The BAS is program software that monitors and controls the building. This building automation system is where the maintenance team can log into a screen and see their system live in action. So using an example, a room has a thermostat in it and let's say the temperature is starting to get too high. Well, the system is interconnected so that the high temperature tells a valve or a damper to open up to allow more cool air to be pumped into the space to lower the temperature back to its program value. This is all done via that low voltage control wiring throughout the system, relaying back into the program known as the BAS. Okay, next we have M8.2 heating system control diagram. So the previous page was the chilled water system, which was our cooling system controls. This page is just the opposite. This is everything heating related, but the same controls function that feeds back into the same BAS. If the temperature gets too cold, the thermostat relays tells the system to open certain valves or dampers to increase the heat back into those spaces. Then we have M8.3 VAV unit control. So VAV stands for variable air volume, and it's a piece of mechanical equipment installed in the ductwork within the ceiling typically, and it controls temperature and airflow to a certain zone within the building. So large commercial buildings typically have multiple VAVs throughout. This is so that different users throughout a building can control different spaces based on their own preference or need, instead of everyone having to deal with the same settings. So when I just mentioned that the thermostat and control sequence controlling the opening and closing of a damper, well, that damper is in the VAV and it opens and closes to allow that airflow adjustment. Thus, its name, variable air volume. Okay, next we have M8.4 Lab AHU Control Diagram. And AHU is just another acronym for mechanical equipment. It stands for Air Handling Unit. Then we have M8.5 Miscellaneous Control Diagrams, which show some more details about that control system we've just been talking about. And then we have M9.1, which has our mechanical schedules. Our previous drawing pages will show the equipment numbers through acronyms and symbols, but to get a full understanding of what the piece of equipment actually is and does, we'll need to flip back to this schedule for reference. 
This schedule also gives us information on the electrical requirements for each piece of equipment. Now remember, there's still a submittal process in construction where the mechanical contractor submits on the equipment they intend to purchase and install for the project. The mechanical engineer reviews and approves this prior to the purchase of this new equipment. The electrical requirements of the submitted equipment that will be purchased could be different than what's shown on the electrical within these mechanical drawing sets. This is something to always pay attention to when coordinating the install of this equipment to make sure that you have the right voltages and amperages. Then we have M9.2, the most important page, which is our mechanical equipment notes and legend. This page explains how we're gonna actually be able to read and understand and digest these mechanical drawings. And this is actually where we're going to start with this drawing review. So let's jump to the top here and take a look at these first four images, which are labeled S-A-R-A-E-A and OA. And these symbols are all just pictures of different types of ductwork within the system. These symbols reflecting up means that the ductwork turns and goes up, while these other symbols reflect that the ductwork turns and goes down. So SA or supply air is everything that starts at the equipment and eventually moves throughout the ductwork to supply the occupied space with fresh air. The return air or RA is everything that gets sucked out of the occupied space and returns back to the equipment or sometimes gets exhausted outside. So I just jumped ahead, but EA is exhaust air. As I mentioned, this means air that exits or exhausts outside of the building and does not get reused as part of the system. Now, OA is outside air, which typically gets pulled in through a louver on the side of the building that feeds back into these air handling units as fresh air for this whole air exchange loop. Next, we have VD and FD, which are lines that have these little offsets on them in the drawing set. Now, VDs are volume dampers, and we talked about this a little previously. They get installed between runs of ductwork. And as we know, a damper is just a piece of metal that opens and closes to adjust the amount of airflow within the ductwork based on some control sequencing. Remember, these VDs are tied into that building automation system through that control wiring. And FD is a fire damper, which does the same thing, but these are actually tied to the fire alarm system. Fire dampers are extremely important so that if there ever was a case of a fire, the flames and the smoke don't get sucked back into the ductwork and spread throughout the building through that airflow. When the fire alarm goes off, a fire damper is told through the building control sequence to close its damper to prevent the spread of fire or smoke so that people are given more time to safely exit the building and to prevent the spread of this fire and smoke further throughout the building. So anywhere you have a fire rated wall that you'll find on your architectural plans with ductwork passing through it that you'll find on your mechanical plans, you should find your fire damper at that same wall within the ductwork. This creates that line of separation between the spaces. Okay, moving down, we have symbols for a bunch of valves. These all open and close differently and serve different purposes depending on the piece of equipment or where they're installed at. Next, we have some sensors, which again are typically tied into the BAS system through control wiring. These sensors feed back information so that the system can rely values and adjust accordingly. They'll also send notifications to the maintenance team if they're outside these normal set points and parameters. And continuing down, similar to our plumbing drawing review, we have piping that turns up or down accordingly based on the symbol as well as the direction of flow. All right, so you're gonna read the remainder of these symbols and get accustomed to them, but this page is always gonna be here for reference as well. Next, we're gonna take a look at a couple of abbreviations that we'll see in the drawings. We saw the ductwork symbols, which we know were air movement throughout the system, but how does air get hot or cold? Well, keeping it brief, some systems utilize cold water and hot water that moves through pipes in and out of equipment. The moving air passes over these cold or hot water lines and the air becomes cold or hot before it enters the final space. This provides that heating, cooling, and the system just does this constant loop back and forth through this equipment. The air is returned or exhausted, and the water, or sometimes glycol, loops back through the heating or cooling equipment, such as these boilers or heat pumps. 
So we see CW, which stands for domestic cold water. We see G, which stands for natural gas. We see HW, standing for hot water. And finally, we see HWR, which stands for hot water recirc, which is short for recirculation. Again, that loop throughout the system. Remember earlier I pointed out that CHR and CHS? Well, I would have expected to find CHR and CHS in the abbreviations, but they're not here. So you could call the mechanical engineer and ask the question, or you could use other context clues. I also see that in HS and HR on this drawing, but these abbreviations weren't specifically listed either. So I know this is piping, which is supplying water or glycol in a loop system. So I'm gonna take a guess that CH stands for chilled, meaning chilled water for the system or chilled glycol for the system. The R is going to stand for return in this scenario, and the S is going to stand for supply, because we know, again, this system is a looping system. The same thing for HS and HR, but for hot water supply and hot water return. Okay, let's start to make sense of these systems by starting to look at the drawings. And we're gonna start with MD 2.1, first floor HVAC demolition. So the drawing is a bunch of numbers, and if you recall, we can gather all this information from our keynotes. So for example, note number seven is RX, or remove existing baseboard radiation, piping, controls in its entirety. Okay, just like all the other drawing review videos, read all these keynotes as they relate back to the drawings, and this would be the scope for the HVAC demolition. All right, moving on to M2.1, first floor HVAC. Again, we have keynotes that will tell us more about what's going on in these drawings, so we always have to read everything as it's all applicable to the project. And scanning over this area, I see a bunch of different symbols, shapes, and numbers. So these shapes reflect that type of ductwork which we saw in the symbols legend, which can be rectangular or circular. We see that the ductwork has bends in it to distribute the air to the final occupied space, and we can follow the ductwork for this movement of air throughout the space. So looking at a couple of these numbers on this in particular piece of ductwork, we see 34 inches by 16 inches. And this tells us that this is a rectangular piece of ductwork that is 34 inches wide and 16 inches tall. Right near that, is 12 inches circular duct, with the 12 being the overall diameter of that circular piece of ductwork. So most of the ductwork is installed with solid lines, which tells us that this is rigid, meaning it's sheet metal ductwork. But if you notice at the end of this ductwork, we have some dashed lines. Well, when the ductwork gets close to its final destination, being the ceiling where it's going to supply air, the engineer actually changes those last couple feet into flexible duct because this is easier to coordinate with the final layout of the ceiling grid. You don't know where the final ceiling grid is going to be potentially when you're going to install this initial hard ductwork or rigid metal ductwork. They allow this as a tolerance so that you can drop that final supply grill into that acoustical ceiling. So speaking of, I also see S4s as well as R7s, but what do these stand for? Well, the S4 is at the end of this ductwork run and the ductwork either supplies air or returns air. So we can make an educated guess that this S4 is something that supplies air. The number below it is a measurement of airflow which is typically measured in cubic feet per minute, making sure enough fresh air is getting into the space while simultaneously we look at the R7 return, making sure that enough air is leaving the space. So if I do some quick math, 700 CFM multiplied by four is 2,800 CFM of supply air. Now, 1,400 multiplied by two is also 2,800 CFM of return air. So there's an equal amount of air entering the space and there's an equal amount of air leaving the space. And the CFM is all designed around the occupancy and the use of the space itself. Ah, these are starting to look a little more familiar now. 
So we see these S's and these R's throughout the drawing set, explaining where air is being supplied and returned to. Also, the ductwork itself is sometimes noted SA or RA to help indicate which piece of ductwork is supplying air and which piece of ductwork is returning air. There are also E's, which could be our exhaust air, as well as L's, which could be linear diffusers. We'd find this out by going to our mechanical schedule. So I'm gonna jump over to M9.1 and zoom in on this section, which we can see L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5 to make sense of those L's from the previous drawing page, meaning these L's are linear diffusers within the drawing. Now, if you don't know what a linear diffuser is, just do a quick Google search, and you can do this with pretty much anything mechanical equipment wise. So taking a look at a high level, we can just trace out where the ductwork ends, but more importantly, where the ductwork starts. But remember, it's a loop. So is there really a start and is there really an end? All right, let's move on to the next page, which is M2.2, first floor HVAC piping. I'm gonna zoom back in where I was earlier on the page to this CHS and CHR. I see these pipes have arrows telling me which way the water or glycol or whatever it is in these pipes is moving and which direction it's going throughout the system. This entire page of HVAC piping is showing us just that where hot water or cold water pipes leave and return. So a lot of it seems to be back to this room, which this room is actually bubbled, where as I see a highlight of one on M3.1. So to learn more about what's going on in this room, let's actually jump to that page, M3.1, and look at this detail one. So we're on detail one on sheet M3.1. I do see the continuation of our pipes from that previous page we were just looking at. Uh, and first of all, if we follow the CH and the H lines for both cooling and heating, we can kind of see where these pipes originate from. So I see that they pass through what is listed as a P1 through a P4. And recall, if we want to understand what P1 through P4 is, we're gonna go back to that mechanical schedule. So remember how I was saying these systems loop? Well, they're under pressure and these P's actually stand for these system pumps to push these liquids throughout the system. Okay, once we continue through the pumps, we'll get back to some boilers, which we know would be our heating system because boilers boil. All right, so the water is heated at the boilers and then pumped with our pumps and we see the line passes through AHU1. Well, we recall that AHU stands for air handling unit, which is that central unit responsible for the main distribution of air throughout the system. Now, if we saw RTU, it would be the same thing, but RTU stands for rooftop unit, just meaning it sits on top of your roof. So again, if you recall earlier, we talked how the air moves over these hot water lines and cold water lines, or typically fins and tubes. And as this air passes through, it either heats up or cools down accordingly. And this is what goes and travels throughout the ductwork to those final occupied spaces. So when I zoom out on this page, I see a few other rooms and multiple AHUs, meaning that there are multiple central air handling units, because this is a large building that needs a lot of airflow. All right, so aside from the pipes and the equipment we just talked about, there are other rectangle symbols and words. These rectangles are just different parts of the air handling unit. There are other tanks that serve different purposes, and I would just suggest doing some Google searching or check out the engineering mindset on what these other systems do. And if you recall, I mentioned some of the systems use glycol, which I can see is used in this system. And if you wanna know the specifics of each piece of equipment, remember to jump back to that mechanical schedule page. All right, moving on to M5.1. This page is just another section cut of some of these air handlers, showing a little more detail for the installer. Next, we have M7.1, heating and cooling plant piping details. Now we see our heating water system on top of this page under detail one, and we see our chilled water system on the bottom of this page. So starting with our heating system, we're gonna take a look at where it starts with our boilers. The water gets hot and it starts to move throughout the system with the help of our pumps. It makes its way to each piece of equipment it's serving, and then it loops back to the boilers and the process starts all over again. 
We also see that there's a water meter on this system, which means new water is entering the system from the city as needed to keep the system going. Then jumping down to our cooling system. So it starts at our cooling piece of equipment, which is noted here as our air-cooled chiller. Again, if you wanna learn about these pieces of equipment and how they actually work from an engineering standpoint, go check out the Engineering Mindset YouTube channel. The reason why glycol is used in systems is because it actually has better thermal properties than water does, making glycol easier to heat and cool than you could water, therefore using less energy overall. So our chilled lines get pumped just like our hot water system did. These chilled lines pass through their intended pieces of equipment and then they return back to the chiller. All right, so we're gonna keep moving with M7.2, heating and cooling coil piping details, which finally shows up that up close information of how each of these valves are to be installed before each piece of equipment and more importantly, the order the fitters install these valves. Next is M7.3, which are the air distribution details, which goes back to our tinners, showing them penetration details and more of all their ductwork. And M7.4, just more details, which we're gonna skip because it's just the same type of information we were just looking at. All right, now we have M8.1, chilled water system control. So I'm gonna zoom in on this chart, which is the input output summary for our chilled water system. Now this is everything the controls contractor is working towards setting up, which is going to monitor and control the overall system. Every dot has a low voltage cable connected to it to monitor certain points. Some are inputs, some are outputs, some trigger alarms to the system and much more. So everything ties back to that BAS or building automation system through BAC, building automation control. Just a bunch of acronyms that all kind of mean the same thing. So M8.1 is controls information for our chilled system. Then we're gonna move to the next page, which is M8.2, which is for our heating system. So you may have heard the term commissioning agent on a job site. The commissioning agent checks that all this mechanical equipment is actually installed properly by essentially verifying what's actually in the field, matches the intent shown on the drawings and within the specifications. The commissioning agent also runs functional performance tests through the software by checking that all of the equipment is actually communicating properly within the BAS. Next, we have M8.3 VAV unit control diagram. So these are specific controls to the variable air volume units in the ductwork, which control the flow of air and distribution throughout the system that we've been talking about throughout this video. All right, so we're gonna skip over M8.4 because it's similar to M8.3, and we're gonna move on to M8.5, which shows miscellaneous controls diagrams which further support the controls contractor. And I don't recall if I mentioned this earlier in the video, but the controls contractor can either work directly in-house for the mechanical contractor, or it can be subcontracted out to a different company. We can see it in both scenarios on different projects. And next we have M9.1, which shows all the information about these pieces of equipment, which we were looking at and referencing earlier. We see our air handler units. We see our VAVs, we see our pumps, and we see our boilers amongst other equipment. This is really gonna be how the mechanical contractor starts to put together uh, equipment logs and procurement logs for stuff that they have to order for the actual project. And our last page is our notes and our legends page where this all started. All right, I hope you learned something from this video. I know it was a long one, but I really wanted to cover a bit more of how the systems worked alongside with how to read the drawings because they really go hand in hand and it would be way too complicated just to point at some symbols and tell you what they are without explaining what they are. Now, all these pieces of equipment also need power. So I'm gonna be tackling an electrical review video here in the near future. So if you haven't yet subscribed, please so and do so as it helps grow the channel. And don't forget to drop a comment down below. So as always, be better, build better, and bye for now.